I built a fully working web app while writing zero code and managed to launch it online, all with the help of AI. I used Claude 3.5 Sonnet and a little known tool called Claude Engineer. I'm gonna show you the entire process and how you can do this too. It is super easy. I'm also gonna put links in the description below for everything I used so you can follow along and do this yourself. You're definitely gonna to wanna to check this out. So we're gonna get started. Now, I'm gonna use a few extra tools here. I'm gonna use something called VS Code. It's a free code editor. It's probably the best one out there. And the other thing I'm gonna use is the command line. So since I'm using Windows, I'm gonna run some of these basic commands in this readme file. I'm gonna run them in the command line. Um, if you're using Mac, you could use something similar, Linux, similar as well. It's very, very simple. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here to this installation and I'm gonna clone this repository. So I already made a folder here for this test. So I'm just gonna copy this and I'm just gonna write CD, which means change directory and I'm gonna paste that in there. So we're now in this folder for my test. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna type this into the command line and it's gonna clone that folder into my command line. So now if I come back here, you can see that Claude Engineer has now been downloaded into my folder. So once I'm in here, I'm gonna hit CD, just like in the instructions here, CD Claude Engineer. I'm just gonna copy and paste that. Do that again. Okay, so now we're in Claude Engineer. Now I'm gonna follow this instruction here to install the required dependencies. You will need to install pip, that's super easy to do as well. So I'm gonna hit that and let's get this installed. All right, so it's been installed. Now let's go to step number three. Set up your env file. So create a .env file in the project root directory and add the following environmental variables. So let's go to VS Code now. And so I've already opened this folder in VS Code and we see we have an env example file here. So I'm just gonna take this and we'll put our Anthropic key and our Tavali key. I'm not gonna show you that because these are private keys, uh, but I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna rename this and just remove that dot .example. All right, so I renamed that env example to just .env and I added those API keys. So let's go on to the next step. Set up the virtual environment for code execution. If you wanna run the main script in a virtual environment rather than default one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and let's run that as well. All right, so it's done installing and I set everything up. So the first thing I ran is just Python main.pi, which starts the whole thing up. Um, again, I just use the instructions to tell me how to do that. And it, it set up this whole thing here. So the first thing I asked it is what can you do? And it gave me a full breakdown of what it can do for me. So um, it explained everything as an AI assistant, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? So then I asked it to create a file structure. So please create a file structure for React app in TypeScript. So it went ahead and did that for me. Um, it created this path. It's also showing me how much it's spending um, in our API credits. So that's really cool too, to keep track of that. So now I'm gonna say, please use this file structure and create a, an app for me to log my hours for my developers. Let's see what it does. So you can see it's coding this all out for us. It's creating folders. Now it's starting to create the files for us. Okay, so we've spent 15 cents so far and it looks like you created something. So let's come back to VS Code. Let's see what it did for us. So here's the new folder it created. And so we have a public folder and an SRC folder and it started to create some components for us. So I'm just gonna ask it, is this ready to run? Let's see what it says. So it says it's not ready to run. We need to create the file, set up the configuration and implement the basic functionality. So it's asking me, would you like to proceed to creating these and implementing the basic functionality? And I'm gonna say yes. All right, so it's done coding our app. Um, what I had to do a few times is ask it, is this ready to run? Um, sometimes it would say no, and it would say, you know, it needs to create a new file. And I would just say, please continue. So I basically had to do that a few times and it's finally done. 
So it created a full file structure for us. Now what's really cool is that every time it makes edits, it has the full file structure in mind. So it's not like I have to edit each file individually without that full structure in mind. It knows the entire application and it's able to edit pieces of it with the entire understanding of the app. So like one of your developers on staff would know the entire application and what needs to be edited in a certain file. The AI knows that, knows that now too. So that's huge for me personally, because now I can have AI as sort of a junior developer that understands my entire application and can make edits to it. So it created this entire file structure for us for this app. So if I come back to VS Code, I can see that it has the full file structure for the app. So this is where it's coded it, React TypeScript app. Um, it has this all set up for us here. So the next thing that I did is I set up something called GitHub and I uploaded it to GitHub. So there's a million tutorials on that. I'm not gonna go through that, but that's really, really simple. Uh, basically you set up GitHub and this is, GitHub is a repository where you can hold your code. So I went ahead and set that up. I uploaded this entire code base to GitHub and then I launched it in something called Versal. Now Versal is another free application that you can use to deploy your apps. So um, just like we went through, I went ahead and let's find our project. I went ahead and uh, put this in GitHub. So, you know, I have a ton of GitHubs already um, for my for my business, but I went ahead and just uploaded everything it coded into GitHub. I made no changes to it. Um, I went over to Versal. I connected GitHub to Versal. It takes a few minutes. Again, there's a million tutorials on this. It's really easy to do. And then I went ahead and deployed it on Versal, which understands React applications, and it launched it for us. So here is the app that it just built for us 100% launched online live right now. That took me a total of about five minutes, in in including installing it and asking it to please continue. It took me another about five minutes to set up the GitHub and deploy it on Versal. So in a matter of about 10 minutes, I went from nothing to a fully coded app that's now live online that I can use right now. So pretty incredible stuff. Um, the other really cool thing is if I come back to the command line, you can see this only cost me 96 cents to do this in terms of Claude API credits. Um, and all I asked it to do was just in two sentences, write this app for me. So one thing that in my uh, business I need to do is I need to have you know my developers log hours for me. So I have them do this manually. I basically have like a, a Google Drive set up and I have them log manual hours for me. But what's really cool about this is if I develop an app like this, I can then categorize that in a better way. I can sum it up. Um, I can provide summaries for clients using this application. So something like this would be very, very useful for me. And now I can build it um, in Claude in just a matter of minutes. So just incredible stuff. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it sort of touch this up a little bit and I'm gonna have it work on the CSS, uh, which is sort of the style sheets to style this out. And I'm gonna see if I can give me a sort of a better style for this. And I'm also gonna ask it to uh, take the hours per individual. So I'm gonna say, you know, for different developers, log their hours and give me a summary of their total hours worked. So I'm gonna come back into the command line and I'm gonna see if it can do that for me. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say two things. First thing, I'm, I'm first gonna ask it to do the development tasks. So I'm gonna say, this is great. Now please add a function where it adds up the hours for each individual developer and also add a category area where developers can add the category of the work they are doing. So let's see how this works. So you can see it's adding this for us. It's applying some edits automatically and it looks like it's done. So I'm just gonna say, are the changes done and ready to deploy? Basically what I would ask my developers. Okay, so it's not, so now it's gonna go ahead and edit this and hopefully it will be. All right, so this has taken a lot longer than I was hoping. And the main issues, the two main issues I'm running into, number one, it takes a lot of time because every time I process a request, 
I have to continually write continue, 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 because it'll write one line of code, and then it'll say, would you like me to keep going? And I have to write continue. And then it'll take a few minutes to write that code, and I'll say, would you like me to keep going? And I'll say continue. So that's one issue I'm running into, so I have to constantly be doing that. The second issue I'm running into is that right now, within Claude, you have a rate limit. So it's limiting how much you can use the system. So if I come over here to rate limits, you see that there's um, 50 requests per minute, um, 40,000 tokens, and then a million tokens per day. So I don't know exactly um, how this is being counted, but I can tell you that after about $5 of use, and the only reason I know how much that is is because Claude Engineer is actually keeping track of how much we're spending here. After about $5 of use, it will hit that limit, and then once it hits that limit, I have to um, basically spin up a new Anthropic account, set up my credit card again, and then generate a new API key. So what happens when that happens is I have to come back into the system and I have to, uh, cause I can't keep using the same console once that happens because it'll start telling me rate limit exceeded, rate limit exceeded. So I have to come back into here. I have to set up a new API key and then I have to come back and I have to basically um, explain to Claude, I have to say, uh, please read the contents of this directory. So I'm pointing it in the direction of, of where it's been working. It's an app you built for me and I'd like you to make some fixes and additional changes. So I need you to get reacquainted with the code before I begin. And then I tell it what directory it's in, right? And then it'll read that. Um, and then it'll say, you know, I need to keep reading this, et cetera, et cetera, continue, continue. And then once it basically gives me this message, it says I've read the contents of the file. Let me summarize what I found. Then we know it's ready to keep working. So basically this would be a lot smoother if we didn't have these rate limits with Anthropic. And I know if you have a higher level account, you won't have to deal with this. Um, so I know you can get like an enterprise plan and that will eliminate this problem. I don't have an enterprise plan, enterprise plan. You probably won't have an enterprise plan. You have to contact their sales department and they're probably gonna cost a lot more than these um, sort of lower tier plans that we have here. There are workarounds, like I mentioned, you just basically have to spin up a new Claude account, get a new API key and put it back in the system and that will work. So that's kind of annoying. Um, and then what ends up happening is a lot of times another issue that happens is the code will be done. It'll tell me that the code is done. Um, I come over here to Versal, and then basically the way I have this set up is really, really simple. Um, I have it set up directly to my repo. So I come, I come here to GitHub. I basically, when, when changes are made, so it'll write the code for me, changes will be made. I'll commit that to uh, my branch. Um, I'll push it to the branch, and then I'll come over here to Versal, and I'll redeploy the app and get that new latest um, code change from GitHub. So it sends it to GitHub, GitHub sends it to Versal. And what's really cool about that, if you've never used GitHub before, um, is that it actually tracks all of your changes and you can see all the commits um, that have happened here. So you can keep track of this. It's, it's more useful when you have a lot of developers working on one project, but it can be helpful because um, let's say the AI or, or a coder makes a mistake in one commit, you can roll back to a, a different commit. So um, that's what's cool. So it keeps all your changes logged here and it keeps everything in one place. So it's really nice. But basically when it makes a change, I have to come back to Versal. I have to get that latest repo and I have to redeploy it. So I have to pull the latest code and I have to redeploy it. Now, sometimes when it pulls that latest code, what I'm finding is that there's errors in compiling the code. So um, there'll be a, a compilation issue. So then I have to come back to Claude and I have to say, hey, um, it didn't work this time. There's a compilation issue. And all I do is I copy the error code and I paste it into Claude and I say, here's the error, please fix it. And then we'll continue with the same where it says, you know, I need to do this. Now, can I take this stuff? I say, continue, continue. Sometimes it'll say it's done. I bring it back and then it'll give me another error code. I have to bring that back into Claude. You get the picture. So um, there's a lot more time that went into this than I was hoping, mainly just because of these issues, right? That rate limit issue, the fact that I have to keep pressing continue, the fact that sometimes the code doesn't execute and I have to come back in and get it to fix those errors and things like that. So um, I've probably been hacking away at this between my, my real job, probably you know four hours, three, four hours. Um, so a lot longer than I was hoping. I've spent about, I wanna say $12 in Claude credits doing this between the you know, multiple accounts I've created, maybe up to 15 um, in that ballpark, 15 you know, max, I would say. And so what I've got now is uh, a working product. So it, it built what I was looking for. You know, I had to jump to a bunch of hoops, but it built what I was looking for. So what I wanted to build was like a developer work log, right? So I manage a lot of developers. I just wanted to have a work log. So uh, a few things that I wanted is I wanted to be able to add different projects here. So we work on a bunch of different projects. So I wanted to be able to just come in here and add a project. 
Um, I then want to be able to come in here, add my you know developer name. So I'll just say Mark, um, and we'll make this a backend job. And I'll say we worked five hours and we did this today. Um, we worked on the Claude app backend. And so then I can select the project. So I'll just select Claude app here and I'll add this log. So you can see that it's adding this to this timesheet for Mark. And you can see we have a total hours here as well. So for me, this is very useful because uh, I can basically have my developers come into an app like this and basically log their hours and then it'll give me totals per project. Um, so that's actually very useful for me, uh, which, is, which is something cool. So I'm actually gonna use this when I'm done with it for my devs. Um, so this is gonna be something I'm actually gonna use. So I'm gonna keep working on this. Now, um, the next step I'm gonna do, and you can see, like I said, you can add a project right here. The design's not amazing, but it, it works. You can see it even has a little JavaScript movement here, which is kind of cool. Um, and so you can add different developers to different projects, et cetera. So I'm gonna add a few more features. I'm gonna add a backend to this. Um, where well, I'll connect this to a database um, so that I don't have to, because basically right now what happens is every time I redeploy this, it clears all this data. So that's not gonna work, right? So we need to connect it to a database so it stores the data. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a login component so that I can um, create accounts for my developers so they can log in and, and log their own hours. And then I can log in as an admin and review everything. So I'm gonna have an admin login, a developer login, and create a database. So that's gonna be the next step of this app. Um, but right now I just kinda wanted to show you what it's done so far, it color coded everything nicely. You, you'll see here, so I'll just add a new project. I'll say Claude backend. So we'll add this project. You can see it gave it a new color code. So, um, you know, I could, I could, you know, do exactly what I showed you before and add more um, hours to this work log. So the app does work. Um, I would say that this probably took me about eight iterations to get to this point. Um, the other thing I can do with Claude engineers, I can actually send it an image so just like in um, Claude chat, um, you can come in here and you can upload an image. So, you know, image analysis capabilities. So um, I will next, what I'm going to do is I'm actually also gonna add a better UI. So I'm gonna take some UIs online and just take some screenshots and I'm gonna upload them here and I'm gonna actually have it sort of make this UI a little bit better. It's actually not bad and for my purposes, it's pretty good. It even added some shadow to these boxes here. And like I said, some movement. So it's really not bad. Um, you know, I think it could just be a little bit better. So I'll probably um, add that element as well. We'll see how that goes. Um, it, so, it, you know, that's, that's sort of the next step. So we see it added a little, you know, calendar functionality and a bunch of cool stuff. So it's doing what I'm asking it to do. And I could tell you this, if you didn't have Claude Engineer, if you weren't using the system that I just showed you, this would be a lot harder. Because if I'm inside of Claude, I have to get Claude to reacquaint all of the file structures of all my files one by one. So I'd have to upload them, have it reacquaint it, um, instead of just pointing it to a file or you know a folder on my computer, right? And then the other thing about Claude is it's gonna give you one file at a time. Whereas this, this software will actually, this, this engineer will actually rewrite multiple files for you at once and then just put them right in your computer. So I can take them straight from my computer, straight to GitHub, straight to the server, right? And that, that workflow is really, really fast. Um, so I don't have to take it, you know, paste it in my editor and then, you know, take it from there and upload it somewhere. It's, it's the workflow is much, much better this way. So I'm so far very impressed with what engineer can do, what this open source software can do. I'm not super impressed with, you know, the rate limits and things like that. That's been the most annoying thing to me, to be honest with you, is this rate limit issue. Um, I'd love to have a version of this where I could upload like 10 different API keys and then it could just bounce around using the different ones. So I don't have to worry about hitting these rate limits and I'm going to get a new API key. But for now, I think this is really impressive. Um, I can only see how much farther this is going to go. This is open source software. Um, so, you know, you have to use the command terminal and things like that. But I mean, I can imagine this being in a really nice like UI form on like a web app where it's doing all of this for you and storing the file structures and pushing it straight to GitHub, straight to Versal without having to do that yourself. And I mean, the possibilities are endless there, right? Because you could get it acquainted with any CMS, right? Magento, WordPress, I mean, you name it. Um, you could get it acquainted with tons of different CMS systems, um, frameworks, you know, like React and things like that. And then it could learn those frameworks, learn your project, and then write the code for you and then deploy it for you automatically, right? So that's the next step. Um, and then the other really cool thing is that if it deploys and it finds an error, I don't have to go in and explain the error. It could identify that error, feed it right back into the AI, and then the AI could actually just fix itself, right? I think that's the next step of all of this. So 
Um, I'd actually be interested in even working on a project like that. And I'm, I'm thinking about doing that myself right now. I just have so many other things I'm working on, but I think something like that would be really, really cool. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button. It really helps me out. And I'm going to be doing a part two where I'm going to show you how to add a database and also add a login function for your users. So you're definitely not going to want to miss that video.